Uh, let's look for something puzzling in his description and play and see whether we can see through it. Anyone got a good, po a good one? Um, Here, I missed the first five seconds of what you said. Go ahead and restate your first five seconds. <clears throat> the first, the first uh, we're looking at the one. Yes. I missed, I missed that part. Yes, okay, okay, okay. Um, we started on the assumption that now we can look at the idea of the one, and if we have any difficulties or puzzles about it, we can open it up and take a look and see where it goes. So that was the last assignment. And um, if any of you have a particularly fruitful paragraph, if not, you'll have to rest on my choice, which is a very bad suggestion. <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he brings it together in 172, if you agree. And I'll go for any other paragraph as well. But 172, when he talks about the supreme principle... said you had a puzzle. And it looks like we'll have a puzzle. Didn't you say you had a clue where there was a puzzle? How about reading uh, two or three sentences? Okay. Do Very I... good? Sure. All right. But since the supreme principle is good itself and not merely good, it is requisite he should contain nothing in himself since he does not even contain good. For if he possessed anything, he would either possess good or that which is not good. But in that which is properly the first good, non-good can have no subsistence. Nor yet can good itself contain good. If then it neither possesses non-good nor good, it contains nothing. And if it contains nothing, it is alone, dwelling in solitary unity, retired from the universality of things. If then other natures are either good, yet not good itself, or perhaps such as are non-good, but he contains neither of these, certainly by possessing nothing, he is good itself. If then anyone adds to his nature either essence or intellect or beauty, by such an addition he deprives them of being the good itself. As on the other hand, by taking away all things and affirming nothing concerning his name, nor deceiving in any respect, as if something was present with his nature, we shall permit him to be what he is, testifying concerning him none of these properties of being which are not present with a cause so sublimely remote from essence itself. In which respect those, for the most part, err, who, when they are ignorant how anyone ought to be praised, detract from the glory of the subject of their praise. While they add such things to his nature as are beneath its dignity, not knowing how to accommodate true praise to its proper object. On this account, we ought also, in the first place, to beware, lest we add anything posterior and unworthy of the divine object of our praise. And to observe, he who surpasses all these is indeed their proper cause, without possessing any of their properties and affections. For the nature of good does not consist in being either all things or someone particular of all. Since if he was some particular, one particular of all, he would be contained under one and the same nature together. He would be contained under one and the same nature together with all. But if he is under one and the same nature together with others, he will vary from others only by a certain proper difference and addition.
Hence, in this case, it will be two and not one. One part of which two, I mean, that which is common to it with the rest, will be non-good, but the other will be good. Hence, in this case, it will be two and not one. One part of which two. He will, therefore, be mixed from good and non-good, and consequently will not be the pure and first good. But that will be the first good of which this participating becomes good beyond the common condition. This then will be good by a certain participation, but that of which this participates will be none of the universality of things, and such therefore must be the condition of the good itself. He's been reading too much purpose. <laughs> but if this too contains good as a part, for it is difference by which for it is difference by which this is a composite good, it is necessary that this should depend on another which is entirely simple and alone good. And hence this which is various depends upon that which is good alone, so that it appears that what is first and the good itself is above all things, is good alone, and contains nothing in its nature, but is perfectly free from all mixture and that it is above all, and is the divinely solitary cause of all. For neither does beauty nor being originate from evil, nor yet from such things as are indifferent. For the efficient is better than the effect, since it is more perfect and divine. You want to read further? Because you said only a couple sentences. And I'm already confused. So. <laughs> no. Louder? I, I said, like it. Did you want to read uh, further? Because you said only a couple sentences. No, I yeah, was admiring I was the way you were proceeding. With fumbling. Well, it's the fumbling method. At the bottom of 173. So that it appears that what is first and the good itself is above all beings, is good alone, and contains nothing in its nature, but is perfectly free from all mixture, and that is above all, and is the divinely solitary cause of all. Right. That's his statement. Mm -hmm. And the uh, And he started it out with the opening sentence, but since the supreme principle is good itself and not merely good, it's requisite that he should contain nothing in himself since he does not even contain good. Um. Ah. Now, when do you need this idea of one? Hmm. A curious notion. Uh,
and check this out. Watch. If among all the names of God, why does the name one rank above all the others? Yeah, go ahead. It's the one idea that you need to understand all others. Pardon me, is that your answer in this? I hope I'm starting to. Go ahead. It's the one idea that you need to understand everything else. All ideas. Answer this, though. Oh, I wouldn't say that. That I'd say that that's like uh, one argument that I would make for it. I, I'd go for probably a few others, and particularly the one that concerns spiritual development, like happiness. Right? Then you, you want me to take this? Off? No, 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 no. I keep it. <coughs> does I mean, this, does this answer this? No. No. But should one sentence answer that question? Well, I'll go for two. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why not assemble numerous uh, reasons why mm. and keep them all together? Well, perhaps all the reasons that we could assemble could be found collapsed into that. Because it can't be ranked. Do you want me to write down another one? I was saying perhaps... Would you like me to write another one down? I don't know if it'll help. <laughs> or forget this. Well, I know. Yo. Well, okay, first part of it would be that we can eliminate a lot of names of God on the basis that they won't they won't function for what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. they, mm -hmm. We can't talk about Godness or Muhammadness um, or Muhammad Muhammadnity, um, but we can talk about goodness or unity. So then it's down to the one 
and the good. So then I'm still left with the question, why do we need the one as opposed to just the good? But it does deal with the issue of, of multiplicity versus um, versus unity. So it's the only and answer. unity is a step below the one. Mm -hmm. No. Well, would you agree there are a whole bunch of negatives that we can we can talk about the nature of the one? It's not this. It's not this. It's not this. It's not that. Mm -hmm. right. That's the only way we can speak of it. Right. We've got a whole bunch of them. Mm -hmm. Not essence. Not intellect. Um, So, Barbara, um, are you looking at the board? Yes. Um, describe uh, what's looking. Mm. Well, there would be a lot of negatives. <laughs> In that, uh, what's looking at the board has no color, no shape. No dimension. Last week we used the word. Oh, could you describe it? Well, I was using a lot of negatives here. Um, oh, go ahead. Well, I was saying there's no color, no shape, no location, no, except no color, no shape, no shape, no size, no, no size. dimension. Okay, no look here. More. Um, well, look here. Uh, you are looking? Yes. Um, can you see what's looking? No. Well, no. Oh, you can't see what's looking. No. Oh, but you know there's something looking. Well, um, yeah, that was... Uh, hmm. No, I would say I don't know there's something looking. Um, that was kind of my hesitation when you first asked, are you looking at the board? Well, then there should be a you. I don't know there is something looking. Right. There should be a you if there's a you looking at the board, but are you looking at the board? But it doesn't... When I looked at, when I look, I don't see a you that's looking at the board, <laughs> or a, or anything that has characteristic or quality. So, maybe someone else could help. Well, that's good. Bradley. All right, go ahead. Since he's on my left, it's always a good direction. Look, you do it, see. What are you trying to do? Mm -hmm. Trying to describe as accurately can mm -hmm. what is it seeing or hearing yeah. or both. Mm -hmm. Agree? Mm -hmm. And you have a whole bunch of negatives. Mm -hmm. If I collect them, if I collect them, mm -hmm. is that the same set over here? Yeah. It looks like there's the same set over there, yeah. Hmm. I have a positive. <laughs> and uh, according to this book, this is uh, said to be a cause? Yes. A cause of what? Of everything. All that is and all that is. All right? Mm-hmm. Well, this thing that's watching, mm -hmm. 
on all of these negatives. Mm -hmm. How does it relate? To, how does it relate to what you're observing? Hmm. How does it relate to it? Well, one thing that occurred to me is that there's no way of distinguishing the board, actually. If you know what I mean. <laughs> well, it seems like, like to say I am looking at the board, there should then be, if I cannot identify the eye, it would be helpful if I could no, identify we wouldn't do the that. board, right? We wouldn't, no, no, we no, wouldn't do that. We wouldn't do that? I just mean... But I'm glad you did. I did what? <laughs> Identified the yeah, board. Yeah, yeah, I tried. Yeah, look, see, what is the relationship between... Oh. There is something you're saying that is watching or hearing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? These are all the negatives. What is the relationship between that which is watching and the thing watched? If not for the watching, there would be no perception of board. That's very chicken shit. Well, it doesn't, <laughs> that's getting close to saying something. Hmm. Well, it was, it's because, of course, you brought up this idea that the one as creator, right? And then I started thinking, hmm, there's not a sense in which you can, I can be said to create the board on the one hand, but on the other hand, the board is not watched unless I watch it. I mean, for me. I mean, if I look in another direction, so I don't want to go to solipsism, particularly. <laughs> I don't mind. You can get help. You can get help. You can get help. No. Yes, good. Helpers, helpers, jump in. What do you think? The question we had, come on. Yeah. If the logic is... And if there's a s set of terms that are that can be used to describe either one or the other, mm -hmm. then can we go the next step and say, that's said to be a cause, what would it be to say this is the cause? Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Like, would you agree that's a big this is a this is a big problem right here. Agree? I do. And what's uh, it? Well, have you ever seen one? A cause? A cause? Mm-hmm. I never do anyone want the I'm so pleased to hear it. <laughs> what did it look like? It looked like a mommy, a mother. A what? A mommy, a mother. Oh, good enough. Oh. She gave birth to a baby. She's the cause? <laughs> In some respects. See, mm -hmm. yeah, let me see. In terms of experience, all you have is a series of events. And the, the similarity between these similar events, when they occur again and again, you say, ah, one is the cause of the other. But would you agree, whatever you're going to call a cause was an effect of something. Mm -hmm. You don't mm -hmm. perceive any difference between cause and effect. Mm -hmm. They're just two events. Just a sequence of events because certain things seem to follow from other kinds of things, we, are, we assign this word to it. But empirically, you don't see it. Mm -hmm. All you have is a sequence, empirically. Well, here there's nothing but a sequence of events. <laughs> yes, that's true. Right? Yes. And we want to know, 
what's the relationship between you right now and what you experience? If what you want to call you, sometimes they call it a witness consciousness or consciousness, mm -hmm. do they not? Consciousness. Right? Okay, look. Mm -hmm. Attention. Consciousness a cause? See, we want to say we have it. Right? Now, is that in your experience or is that a word to cover up a mystery? I take B. <laughs> or door number two. But I mean if you have this, you ought to know you have it, and it ought to be different than you. Right? So it should be described, should it not? Well, who's first? I don't hold the position, so I need not describe it. <laughs> hmm. Would you go further and say that uh, all of this, this, we're calling this experience, right? we're calling this experience, and somehow we're conscious of it. Is that another experience? Is consciousness another experience? If so, then you should be able to describe it. True. Does anyone hold the experience consciousness? I was checking to see if we could get a research separate. Are you are you asking? Um, are you asking that? Well, let me go one more step then, okay? Where does ex where does experience come from? Interaction. Yeah. Interaction. It comes between interaction between yourself as a conscious being, mm -hmm. experiencing the outer, and uh, reflecting that in the loop. So it's a reflective process. Uh, would you not agree that uh, most people are taught that uh, that whatever you experience, you experience it in your mind. But somehow, all of the sense data, all the, it's all presented here. Is that the theory? Yep. That's the theory. What? That's the that theory. is the theory. What? And um, so, like, um, it's it, it's here. Is that right? <laughs> the interpretation. It's not out here. It's in here. It's, it's internal. It's subjective. So the subjectivity is the consciousness, and the objectivity and the interaction between the two is the experience. But it's not in the brain. It's in the consciousness that's, that is. It's all, the, the whole thing. It's, it's, it's not a piece. It, it's, 
it's all inter it's all intertwined. It can't be any yeah, piece. Okay, it can be intertwined, but where is it? Where <laughs> it's everywhere. It's, uh, <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, This is a way of talking about it, but this is what we've been taught, that it always takes place here. Um, yes. And we have the additional theory that um, within it, there's a... Uh, consciousness that allows you to experience what's in your mind. Like a computer screen. What? what? Like a computer screen. Like a com computer yeah. screen. No, a computer screen. See? <clears throat> now, um, if there is this witness consciousness, It's watching all of this taking place, right? <coughs> but you've never experienced it, watching it, it, everything take place, right? It's not in experience. Um, Would you agree it's the condition for experience? Can we say that? Yes. Consciousness is the condition for experience. And if you didn't have that condition, you wouldn't experience. If I were unconscious? All right. <laughs> if I were unconscious? Yeah. I would say so. Yeah. No. 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 Mm -hmm. Or sleep. Um, So, would you agree we can talk about the conditions for this and we can also talk about the cause of that, cause of ignition. Can we not? Conditions. There has to be oxygen, and there has to be certain to certain temperature, a certain flammable material. These are the conditions, right? But there also has to be a cause. Um, is the cause of experience when we direct our attention? I think not entirely, because it seems like there's a certain level of experience. When you that direct your attention at something, does that then bring it into existence? Yeah. Well, well, isn't there isn't there a distinction between seeing and looking? 
right? Or opening one's eyes and, and focusing one's attention? No, I, I, I'd rather not. Okay. I'm going to deal with uh, other ways of talking about it. Okay. Just, just that. See where it goes. Would you say, though, that when experienced, then there must be, that consciousness must then be focused on it? Okay. Right. right. Well, okay. then it's, it's, it provides the condition as well as the cause. Yeah. Yeah, I think we cause the condition and reflect upon right. it. Well, well then, then, how is it different from the one? Uh, hmm. It's not. We can't find any difference based on that statement, certainly. Well, no. see, that's what makes this interesting is because there is a difference. Mm -hmm. See, he wants to say that um, because of all being, right, as the intelligible. Beauty itself. So, if this person then could uh, focus that consciousness uh, I could focus this consciousness just for a moment just to get a picture of it. there, and if that is the, this kind of experience, then, hmm. then it's functioning, functioning in at least an analogous way. Then it not. would be very, very analogous, wouldn't it? Yeah. I'm sorry, are you saying Louder, please. <clears throat> when you draw the green, right, are you saying focus, okay. focus the consciousness yeah. on intelligible beauty in your head? Well, in the Chimeas, Plato is saying that uh, there is that divine seed and it's cultivated and what happens? He's got a Tantra game, doesn't it? Come on. Yeah. Yes. And therefore? And therefore, it looks as if there is that experience of intelligible beauty in the that position, so mm -hmm. to speak. I've forgotten the name for it in Tantra-wise. The Thousand Petal Lotus or the... Mm -hmm. But my friend Brad was the one with the question. And he sang that uh, now that this is available, uh,
I was full of wife. From all of that. And then, Is that what he was doing? I think so, in the passage we read. Ah, hmm. So he's putting the whole metaphysics, right? Right in here. Hmm. The whole tantra game, everything, right there. And if it were matched, then where would the difference be between his metaphysics on the one side and the individual experiences on the other? No difference. Ah. But, you see, the thing that, that uh, See, in this state, in this state, that's not equivalent to nothing, because nothing is making a distinction. Try this then, okay? What is experience? <laughs> Yo, thank you for volunteering, Brad. Happy being. What did you say? No other than being. He said that would be being, then. No other than being. This is in time. Agree? Mm -hmm. That's in time. And uh,
Is there a duration for experiments? Yes. Yes, it has to be. Right? Yeah. Because you have to reflect on the past. Would you agree? Uh, everything all the past right, is bringing forward the present. Right? Mm -hmm. And it is a particular Interval, agree? Mm -hmm. Thomas. Nanoseconds. So someone is going to fig they're figuring it out now. Nanoseconds. Um, <clears throat> so each momentary experience. Like the camera, it's taking a picture, right? They're taking pictures. And then you have to then um, must you not say that it, it's a there is a gap between any successive moment. Is that right? So I'll fill that in. <laughs> boundary between each one. In other words, we could line them up and they would look like that, wouldn't it? Like uh, and then the gap between them um, would you not agree that uh, that gap, there's nothing going on. <laughs> no, in fact, well, if it's a gap, I mean, this is where the action is. Mm, that would be no. <laughs> oh. Then out of that gap comes the event. Is that right? Mm. And it returns to it mm. at the next moment. Right? This is the problem of the carpenter. Right? Can you build it so would you what agree? Way? Well, would you agree a carpenter may have a lot of debris in the garage where he's working? Mm -hmm. Well, would you not agree every moment is past? Where does the past go? <laughs> Who collects all the garbage? Okay, but is it is it in and out of this that the present emerges out of? And that's nothing? Sort of. <laughs> I mean, is it likely to have the same qualities as uh, the one? And the watcher? And the man. Could could be. Hmm. 
Well, then, the moment goes, the, mo the moment is the source of everything, the gap, and it returns. Therefore, that must be the intelligence. Is that right? That from which and that which comes to be and returns to it? Because we do not agree each successive moment must maintain a certain sameness with the past and difference, right? Make room for difference. And therefore, for each moment to, to have that stability, each time adding in a very harmonious way, right? It's pretty arty, isn't it? It's keeping it all together, coming out of the gap. Well, the gap must be the source of intelligence. Is that right, Barbara? In order for there to be a continuity, there'd have to be intelligence. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, in order that for there to be growth, development, decay. Well, then experience is only the shadow of the action of the intelligence. True. Mm -hmm. Insofar as it... Re Brief as it is, right? Okay. Right. The present is just a flash of mm -hmm. pulsating light, right? Is that, that right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, right? But we take this to be real, but not the intelligence in and out of which, uh, uh, and that's the gap. Well, then we have the gap, witness, and the one. Oh, wait a minute. Would you agree we need a statement to put all these three together? We do. Barbara, who are you going to invite? I was going to invite Brad because of his wondering oh, remarks. Oh, okay, okay, go but, ahead. But I do notice that we have someone putting things together at the front table here. Oh, okay. And so he... So we can call Come upon on. him. Might be the person. Okay. Did you follow Barbara's reasoning? <laughs> because I'm constructing things, <laughs> I should be the one to construct something. Construct something. Participate. Reconstruct. <laughs> Help. <laughs> hmm. Put all three together into one. Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. And the uh, present must then contain all of the samenesses that are significant from the past and is pushing it forward. And all the differences. About all the differences. Pardon? About all the differences. And, yeah. yeah. Complete data bank. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And quickly, there's another moment. Mm -hmm. And the one that left, back into the gap. <laughs> right, just flash it, right, flash it, flash it. Right. Reality is a flasher. A flasher. Oh, oh. So the next time I see it, we'll be doing Plotinus, because that's the next section. I th you find that interesting? Yes, mm -hmm. I did. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you. Oh. We take that little green square and call that the original paradigm? Yep. Yep. Paradigm. Intelligible paradigm. Right. Yeah. Wow. That, so that's who Cronus grabbed onto when he passed it on to Zeus. Oh. Yeah. And uh, this is, uh, see, the, the, the uh, difference between the modern world and the ancient world is right there because the uh, ancient world does this. It says, uh, uh, Connected to all the things. 
-hmm. They're not confined right. within your skull. So in other words, we no. don't have consciousness. Consciousness no, no, no. creates us. No. Or as uh, even Heraclitus, Heraclitus says, Heraclitus says that uh, we don't have intelligence. We participate, we participate. in intelligence. Ah, a little fun? Brilliant. Okay.